Today is the final maintenance video, the final major cleaning I will be doing on this tank right here, the 60 centimeter Aquascaped Aquarium. It's not the final video of this tank, but it is the final cleaning video. And after that, it's time to rescape maybe next month or the month after. But this right here, you can see the lily pipes are really dirty, covered in algae. Just take a look at the intake pipe. That is just a lot of algae there here as well, the outflow. And I'll also be cleaning this right here because this filter hosing is supposed to be clear, but as you can see, it is not clear. So I'll be definitely cleaning that. The canister filter, I'm not too sure if I'll clean that because it's been running for a year, no problems. Usually when your canister filter is super dirty, you'll have like an, a buildup of oil film on the surface of the water. But as you can see, the water is absolutely perfect. The fish are doing incredible in here. And I don't overfeed the fish in this tank. I only give them food once a day or once every other day. And you can see they are doing perfect. The auto sink lists are also doing amazing. Here is one guy just sucking on the glass and the others are somewhere in the back. Maybe we'll get to see them later. But I'm gonna start off by just doing regular maintenance by cleaning the glass, taking some water out, doing a little bit of trimming, and then we'll get to the filter pipes. Actually, sorry about that. Filter pipes will be cleaned first because once I remove this out of the tank, it'll be easier to clean the glass, especially on this side because I don't want to bump into this and accidentally break this. Uh, so yeah, that one first. All right, so I've got the lily pipe, the outflow side right here, full of algae. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean this hose right here because it's supposed to be a clear color like this section right here, but you can see it's full of algae. So I'm gonna clean this right now. And many people think when you clean these hoses, it's really complicated and you have to remove it from the canister filter and bring it to the kitchen or something like that and then use some bleach water solution to clean the insides out. And it's not that complicated. You can do it on the spot right here. All you need is just one of these little spring brushes. And yeah, this is all you need. So I'll show you how to use this right now. So if you've got one of these spring brushes, it really is so convenient and so useful. I use this every time I do maintenance because it gets all the dirt out of the filter hoses so easily. So you give it like two or three runs and it'll come out absolutely clear. And then when you want to give it a flush, use your double tap connectors where you closed it off, open it up, and then all that dirty water flows out. And the reason why it does that, the reason why it's able to do that, is firstly because I've got a double tap connector right there, and secondly, because the intake pipe is still in the tank, so it's still able to suck in tank water into the filter without having the pump running, and we've just cleaned the outflow side. So now it's time to clean the other side, the inflow side. So the filter hoses are now looking really clear, really nice and beautiful. Look at this, look at the color of that. That is so nice. And then here as well, this is the other one. And now I'm going to clean this out. So I've showed this before, but I've just got this container uh, filled with water and a solution of uh, this thing right here, ADA Super G. And what, what it basically is, it's just bleach. You can use bleach, but because this is so cheap here in Japan, I just get this. It's like $5 for this bottle and you don't need a lot of it. I usually just let this sit in here for about an hour and when I'm back, it's much cleaner. It's not 100% clean, but the more you put, th the more of this you put in, uh, the cleaner it'll get. And also the less algae there is, you can get it to be 100% clean, but because there's so much algae right now, uh, it's definitely not going to be 100% clean, so I'll have to use like another uh, type of brush later to clean the insides and I'll show you that in a short while. So while I wait for that bleach or chlorine to clean up the lily pipes, I'm going to clean the glass because there is some algae 
on the glass as you can see and right here I've spotted another auto sync list so that's cool or maybe it's the same one. Oh no there's another one right there look at that so yeah uh, okay I'm gonna clean the glass right now and to clean the glass I use one of these right here the melamine sponge super easy to use and it works so well I just get a big bag of this and I cut them up into smaller portions like this so that I can use them to clean and they are super good I love this sponge Alright, so I've just cleaned the glass. First I used that sponge which I showed you earlier. Then I used a razor, a pro razor or a scraper, algae scraper, uh, to scrape the glass on all four sides. So now the glass is looking really, really clean. You can also see I've moved the heater uh, so I can clean the glass. I didn't want to take it out of the water because I'd have to turn it off and then turn it back on later, which I don't want to do. So right now I'm going to trim some of the longer, the taller Hygrophila pinnatifidas because I want it to stay compact. And I've mentioned this before, but if you want Hygrophila pinnatifida to grow nice and dense and bushy, you got to trim off all the long ones like this. Just trim it off from the bottom section and yeah just like that really easy and if you don't have if you're growing Hygrophila pinnatifida in a non CO2 environment it might not be the best idea to do this because it'll take a longer time for them to grow and adjust to trimmings so yeah I don't know if you're if you're using CO2 uh, strong light you give fertilizers then they'll be all right. And the Hygrophila pinnatifida here is really red in color. And I actually prefer my Hygrophila pinnatifida to be green. And I don't know why it's turning red. Maybe because the fertilizer dosage that I'm dozing is too lean for them or maybe because of the light the Chihiros RGB light uh, I could dim down the reds but I don't know I don't mind the red color Hygrophila pinnatifida so next up it's time to drain this tank I'm going to drain it down about 50% and then we'll top it back up with some clean and fresh water but when I'm draining the tank what I try to uh, drain out is all the debris that's at the bottom like fallen leaves and yeah mostly just fallen leaves that I try to look for uh, some dirt what else what else is there nothing much really really nothing much like I'll drain some of these leaves out too <laughs> Alright, so less than an hour since I put the lily pipes in, let's take a look at how they are looking right now. So right here it is. You can see, of course, not 100% perfect, but it is looking a lot cleaner than when we put them in there. And if I left this in for like 24 hours, say I come back tomorrow, it probably would be close to 100% clean. Now the next step is to use this spring brush to clean the remaining algae that's on the lily pipes and this brush is more flexible than the brush I used earlier to clean the filter hoses so this is slightly different it's more flexible it's softer to work with and it's actually kind of really fun to use so I'm going to use this to clean the lily pipes and the reason why I don't use this from the very beginning and the reason why I soak the lily pipes in this bleach uh, chlorine solution is because I want to handle the lily pipes as little as possible I don't want to be like grabbing them and trying to clean them as as hard as I can because they're very fragile so the more you handle them the more you grab onto them and really work with them with a brush 
uh, the more chance of it breaking. So I want to handle these as little as possible. So right now, you can see the majority of the algae is gone. Now all I have to do is do a little bit of scrubbing with a soft brush and it should be clean in just a few moments. There you can see just after a few passes using that spring brush, the lily pipes look brand new, crystal clear. Look at that. All right, so the intake side is on right there. The intake side always goes on first. I've hooked it up uh, with the double tap connectors right here. It's really convenient to have this on hand because you can stop the flow of water uh, when the pump is not running. So right now, before putting the outflow side, of the lily pipe. I'm going to drain out some water that's in the canister filter. This might be a little bit hard to understand, but because the intake side is on right now, it's able to suck water in and water can come out. And all the water that's in here is a little bit dirty, so to remove some of this, I'm going to turn the pump on right now. Doing this with one hand is kind of tricky. Oh yeah, and before that, you must open this up because you want the water to flow through. If this is closed, the water will get stuck there and it won't go anywhere. So, open the double tap connectors. Let me put you guys down. Oh, there it goes. So I usually do this after every maintenance. And I'll give the canister filter a little shake just to release some of the uh, gunk in there. But yeah, as long as the water is running clear, then we can turn this off, turn the filter off. But you can see, even though we turn the filter off, because there is water flowing, uh, it doesn't stop. So we gotta turn this off, and then the water will stop flowing. So because we've got that double tap, it makes the job much easier and now we can go and put this lily pipe back on and now that both lily pipes are back on we can open this which will release some air and then we'll plug the filter back in and we can double check Make sure it's running. Perfect. And there it is. Everything is put together, looking really nice and clean. Just take a look at how good the glass is looking. Both the aquarium glass and the lily pipes. Look at how clear that is. I think it's time to feed the fish a little bit of food. I think that's enough. I don't give them a lot because there's not many fish in this tank. And yeah, I don't want to uh, get this tank all dirty again right after cleaning it, so. Probably not the most entertaining, exciting video today, but I hope you can learn something new from it, maybe. And I want to make one more video on this tank, a nice cinematic video in a couple of weeks time. And then after that, I'll take this tank down and create something new. And I know many people are not going to be happy with that, but we got to move forward. And something new is always something exciting. As always, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did like spot, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you next time.